students of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Grand Prairie, Alberta. This Mass is offered for their children and grandchildren that they will continue to walk with the Lord. And they ask for God's blessings on their family, friends, and on the parishioners of St. Joseph's Parish. Because of you, today will be a richer day for so many people across Canada. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, so death spread to all, because all have sinned. Sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one person's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of the trespass of one, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as the trespass of one led to condemnation for all, so the act of righteousness of one leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the disobedience of one person the many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one person the many will be made righteous. But law came in with the result that the trespass multiplied, and where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that just as the sin exercised dominion in death, so grace might also exercise dominion through justification, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord.
But you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am. Here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. In the sky. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the disciples, Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those servants. The Gospel of the Lord. In our gospel, we're told to be like servants who await the master's return for a wedding. It's one of many examples that invoke our call to service. And so what do we learn from this particular pericope or selection? First is, is that servants are always ready. They're always prepared. They're always alert to the movements of those whom they serve. I think this was best illustrated in a movie that came out not that long ago. You may have seen it, The Butler. The Butler is a movie about the American civil rights movement, and it's an impressive anthology about the African-American fight for equality. But I highlight it as a wonderful illustration about service as an art form and as a trade that requires study and discipline. What you quickly realize is that 
Not just anyone can be a servant. You must be willing to be present without being seen, willing to be mindful, not of your own needs, but to the needs of others. In his book entitled The Servant, James Hunter comments that the role of a leader is to serve, that servant leaders do what others need. But if you do what others want, he says, well, then you're a slave. God is not calling us to slavery. God is calling us to servitude. Servants, I would say, are true artists who understand how to bring out the best in others, to call out the beauty and the grace of any given moment. But the only way that a servant can truly be an artist, as I am describing, is if they are motivated by love. Not the noun that describes feelings, but the verb that describes behavior. Hunter elaborates this point in his book. He writes that love is built on will. Love is as love does. I'll say that again. Love is as love does. That our intentions without actions mean very little. But intentions and action, this forms the foundation for a servant who is both a leader and an artist. Furthermore, if we're motivated by love, then we never really tired of being a servant. It's this kind of love that allows Jesus to endure the cross, this love that allows for us to endure our own cross, whatever way that might take its shape. The difficulty is, is that too many of us are servants, well, actually, no, really, we're slaves to that which we do not love. Someone once told me that the number of keys you have on your keychain represents the number of things that you're worried about at any given moment in your life. This, by the way, leaves me in a very bad position. I have too many keys. But I ask you, Are the things to which you are, are these things that you're concerned about, are you a slave or are you a servant to these things? The real question, therefore, is who or what do you serve? Is what we serve or who we serve bringing out the best in who they are? And in turn, is it bringing out the best in, in, in who we are called to be? I ask this because when it was all said and done, there have been many movies made about the civil rights movement in the United States. But what made the butler such a special story was that it isn't simply about what he achieved, but it's how he achieved it. Though he worked at the White House, he had no political power, no ability to create laws whatsoever. What made his story so remarkable is his ability to serve, to bring out the best in those around him. This is what Christ did. This is what we are called to do, to serve. Not out of an obligation, not out of fear or desire for some kind of reward, but out of love, out of love for our master. And so let us stand, aware that through Jesus Christ, we are given many gifts. Let us ask God to help us to use them for the service of others, that we, the church, may be filled with the grace to live each day alert to opportunities to love Jesus and those around us, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that leaders of countries may realize that providing the needs for the poor, they are doing what is just in the eyes of God, we pray. That people who suffer from poverty in developing countries may find their situation relieved through the love and care of others, we pray. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, to religious life and to marriage, and to all forms of ministry in the church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all of those who are sick and suffering, those whose dignity is being compromised, those who are imprisoned, those who are caring for all of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, For your own intentions that you hold in the silence of your hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord our God, we ask you to hear these prayers and grant them according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him he has become a source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts of the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, By the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with her blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Basil, St. Michael, and with all of the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For I gave them the power and the glory of our years, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer of spiritual communion. O Eucharistic heart of Jesus, I wish to be united with your eternal oblation to the Father, with each Eucharistic sacrifice being offered at this moment upon the earth. Lord Jesus, come and dwell in my heart. Nourish me with the bread of life. Cleanse, wash, and purify me in the bath of your precious blood. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that we may now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our thanks to an anonymous donor from Grand Prairie, Alberta, whose generous contribution made the televising of today's Mass possible. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at one 888 383-6277 for details.